Okay, well, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, depending on your time zone and, and where you are. Um, and welcome to this, this dialogue with uh, the president of Skidmore College. My name is Jessica Ricker, and I have the distinguished honor of serving as vice president for enrollment uh, and dean of admissions and financial aid at Skidmore College uh, in Saratoga Springs, New York. And we are excited to have a couple thousand um, excited um, prospective students, right, who are starting their college journeys, um, applicants um, to, to the college, right, and even some students who are already part of the class of 2028 who have enrolled at Skidmore. Um, so we're excited to have you all here. And as you all flow into the Zoom room, um, I'm going to share just one quick little story to get us started, uh, which is that about a year ago, I was getting to know Skidmore for the first time. I just started in this role here in June, um, and President Connor and so many other generous community members helped me get to know what's so special about Skidmore. Um, and so I'm, I'm delighted to have President Connor here with us tonight. Um, I know many of you are asking that question, what is so special about Skidmore College? Um, it's not every night that a college president takes an hour out of their very busy schedule um, to help um, young people and their families really understand what's so so tremendous about an institution. Um, but I'm delighted to turn it over to, to President Connor um, to get us started. Um, before I do so, though, um, President Connor has offered to answer questions. So throughout the evening, if you would like to put questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen, um, in the second half of the webinar, he'll answer some live questions. Um, and so we will, I will be back on camera for those. But for now, um, I'm delighted to introduce you all to President Mark Connor um, and enjoy your time. President Connor, I turn it to you. Great. Uh, Je Jessica, thank you so much. And, and thanks to everybody who, who has joined us this evening. Uh, we've, got, we've got such a rich audience. I know we've got students who have accepted coming to Skidmore, current applicants who are considering Skidmore. Uh, of course, we have parents and family. We've got We've got our students of the future, and and Jessica is very kind to to thank me for giving an hour to you this evening. I want to thank you for for joining me for this hour. There's there's frankly no more important role that I have than to help young people uh, uh, think about Skidmore and all the special things about this great college. You you are in a time of discernment. Uh, you're thinking about your future and what role higher education plays in that. Why you would want to go to a great college like Skidmore. And I know you've got multiple choices and I, I encourage you in that process of discernment. Also recognize you're doing this in a tough time. Uh, your high school experience has been marked by the COVID pandemic. Uh, we're all aware of the global struggles. Uh, we're in the early stages of a polarizing national election. There's, it's a heavy time uh, in the world today. Well, what I would say to you is do not be discouraged. Uh, be filled with hope. I'm in the field of higher education. That is a field that is defined by hope. We think about the future every day. And, and that's what I would leave you with on this day. I'm gonna to talk to you for, for just under a half hour and then we'll have a half hour for, uh, for your questions, which I'm eager for and excited for. I wanna give you a sense of Skidmore and, and why I'm here and what I've seen in my time at Skidmore. I'm now halfway through my fourth year. I came here in June of 2020, uh, you know, timed it perfectly with the global pandemic, uh, arrived with COVID. Uh, so I've been through, uh, in these last four years, that pandemic time. My wife, Barbara, and I have three sons. Our youngest uh, was a high school senior when I, when I took the position and is now preparing to graduate from, from another liberal arts college. Uh, he, he didn't want to go to Skidmore where his dad you know, could could meet with him frequently and give him advice on life and so forth, but uh, uh, is is availing himself of the liberal arts education. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest uh, in Tacoma, Washington, spent 24 years in the rural south of Virginia, uh, where I taught at, a, at another great liberal arts college. I started there as an English professor. I eventually became provost and chief academic officer and now uh, president at this great college in the capital region of New York. So, so why Skidmore for me? Uh, my process of discernment to come here. I wanted to be at a great liberal arts college, which it certainly is. 
I wanted an institution that was particularly preeminent in the arts and creativity, which it certainly is. I wanted a school that also had professional programs like management and business, like health sciences, like education and social work, which Skidmore has. Uh, I wanted to be in a place where programs like entrepreneurship and integrated science were being taught. And when I heard the Skidmore motto, creative thought matters, that was the moment when I said to myself, that's a place where I want to be. That's a place that is educating people for the challenges of the 21st century. What have I found at Skidmore? I have found communities. Of course, the Skidmore community, the Saratoga Springs community, this remarkable, vibrant small city in which we live, the Adirondack region, uh, a region rich with history, with diversity, and with opportunity. What I have found in the Skidmore community is first and foremost, kindness. And I, and I really emphasize that there's a kindness to the student body that, that continues to impress me. I have taught uh, coming to Skidmore. I taught a Shakespeare class uh, a year ago. I'm teaching an Irish literature and history class now. I'm getting to know the students uh, on this campus, the kindness, the creativity, the resilience that this student body has shown, the diversity of the student body, and a desire to change the world for the better. That is the essence of the Skidmore mission. And that, I think, should be one of the key things you look for as you're discerning your own, your own college or university. What do you want in its mission? To change the world for the better. The faculty at Skidmore are extraordinary, as fine as I have seen anywhere in my experience in higher ed. We offer a great academic experience. Our athletic programs are thriving. And we are all about opportunity whether that's the Startup Skidmore uh, uh, opportunity or the Fryrick Entrepreneurship Competition or the Outing Club, our largest student club, our study abroad opportunities, research opportunities with faculty. Last year, we invested another million dollars in our endowment earmarked for student opportunities with faculty. Opportunity should be the, the defining word of the college experience. So what could you expect if you were to come to Skidmore? First thing I would say is expect to challenge and be challenged. You should expect from a great college that it will challenge you and that it will welcome the challenges you bring to its community and to that institution. One of the things we prioritize on our campus is the safety of our, of our student body and of our community. But I will emphasize that does not necessarily mean comfort. Uh, one of our key priorities is speech and expression on college campuses. I am an avid supporter of the Constitution and the First Amendment and the rights of free speech. One of the things I say to all of our first year students at our convocation is, I don't want to be at a place where everybody agrees. I do not want to be at a place where everyone agrees. I need to hear perspectives and opinions and expressions that challenge me, particularly at this moment in our nation, a time of such polarization, when people want to hear only those things with which they agree, that is the opposite of a liberal arts education. And so I encourage our community to have the courage to make mistakes, to say things that are daring, knowing that we will take care of each other, that we will lead with kindness and understanding and grace rather than judgment and censorship and rejection. That, of course, is essential to have a rigorous academic experience. If any place should be a bastion of free expression and the rich exchange of ideas, it should be a college classroom. It should be a college campus. So you can certainly expect that kind of experience at Skidmore. And you can expect lifelong friendships. That is a vital part of the college experience. And I urge you to look for a place where you think, I, I could be in this community. I could, I could be with these people. I could grow with these people. Because you will hear at every college, oh, when you come here, you will find yourself. You'll find yourself at, at this college. And, and indeed, you will. Finding yourself is a crucial part of the college experience. But we do not just stumble upon ourselves. You will find yourself and you will also forge yourself. 
I urge you to think of that verb to forge. You will hammer out your identity. You will make as well as be made by the college environment to which you come. So look for a place that's going to encourage you, that's going to allow you to forge yourself and find yourself. Let me say a word about our campus. I'm going to I'm going to pick two buildings that I'm going to describe. Cuz one of the things I like to say about Skidmore is we don't just build buildings at Skidmore. We build concepts. We build concepts of teaching and learning that we give material form. So let me start with our new Billy Tish Center for Integrated Sciences, a massive project that we are just completing this, this spring. This is 200,000 square feet of cutting edge scientific space, 46 research labs, 16 classrooms, 22 teaching labs, 10 different science departments, all mixed together cheek by jowl, not just interdisciplinary, where you put the disciplines next to each other, but integrated where the scientific disciplines speak to one another, inform one another. At the heart of this building, with almost 100 faculty and staff office there, is the IDEA Lab. This is a space for innovative interdisciplinary exploration. It's a place where ideas get made. They get hammered into physical form. It has everything from the most uh, 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 high-tech 3D printers to sewing machines where, where students, staff, and faculty will make, they'll give material form to the ideas that they are thinking. Again, this is more than a building. It's a concept of science as integrated exploration. Skidmore spent over 10 years on this project. And you can bet when I came here, one of the first things I said was, thank you. Thank you for the Center for Integrated Sciences, a great liberal arts college must not only have a great science building, but a building that is constantly evolving, because that, of course, is what the field of science is constantly doing. A second building, the Zankel Music Center. This building is, houses our, our rich and diverse music faculty and departments. It has Carnegie Hall level acoustics. Here we get performance and master classes from amazing artists like Branford Marsalis. It is a concept of conservatory level music education for everyone, not just music majors, but any student who wants to continue their interest in music, who wants to hear music performed, wants to be one of our 10 different a cappella groups, who wants to be part of the Skidmania Festival every, every winter when student groups perform songs from 50 years ago in a kind of freewheeling festival. And finally, I'll mention the Tang Teaching Museum. This is, of course, a museum, but a place where faculty and students come to use material things, art, the art that human beings have made, to teach multiple classes. The first student who described this to me, I said, oh, what class did you have in the tank? Thinking it would be art history or sculpture. She said, introduction to finance. She was learning the tools and skills of finance and accounting through the use of art and creativity. Again, creative thought matters. Another moment where I said, this is the kind of place where I want to be because space connotes values. When you go to a college campus and you look at the kinds of buildings that they want to, where the, the learning takes place, they are expressing their priorities and their values. Our latest endeavor, which we're in the middle of, it'll be completed uh, almost this time next year, the McCaffrey Wagman Tennis and Wellness Center. No, no initiative is of more importance in college campuses today than health and wellness. Mental health in particular is one of the most pressing issues on every college campus. We have approached that as looking at health and wellness holistically, mind, body, spirit. What does it mean to minister to all those parts of the student and the community experience? And so last year we embarked upon a $42 million state-of-the-art center for all of our health and wellness facilities, our health center, our counseling center, our peer health education, but also meditation spaces, spin class spaces, martial arts class spaces, spaces where our office of spiritual life can come together to do meditation, Zen training, and so forth, bringing all those different elements together, including a 10,000 square foot fitness center for your physical health. Again, thinking about health as mind, body, and spirit. 
A key part of this project is also new athletic facilities, eight magnificent outdoor tennis courts. Uh, our, our men's and women's tennis team competed on those this fall. An indoor tennis facility that can also provide training facilities, varsity locker rooms for other sports. We have been building our athletic facilities piece by piece over the last five years. A newly renovated softball field, a new hockey training facility. We make a conscious investment in the Division Three student athlete experience. To me, that is sort of the, the last place of pure student athlete experience. You're a student first and you do your sport with all the verve and energy and commitment that great athletic experience requires. I emphasize the health and wellness because that approach is part of what got us through the pandemic. The way we managed COVID, we kept our doors open. We brought our students back, even in the fall of 2020. We continued our educational mission. We kept our community safe and we communicated at every step of the way to our students, to our faculty, to our staff, to our parents, to our alums, what we were doing and how we were doing it. We followed the science and our COVID numbers were as low as anywhere in the country. And we continued to deliver the Skidmore education. I'm enormously proud of how we got through that time and particularly proud of our students. This year's graduating class, the class of 2024, they were the four year COVID class. They're also my class. I was a, a first year, now a senior with that class. Uh, when, when people talk about college students today and they, you know, you'll hear them say things like, oh, they're fragile or they're not, you know, they, they can't take, you know, you know, like, let me show you resilient students. Let me show you students with grit. Let me show you students who can endure. That's what the Skidmore students have done in these four years. And I'm enormously proud of what we accomplished during that time. And now we're building upon that success in so many ways. On my very first day in office, this was July 1st of 2020, I announced to our community our racial justice initiative. And this was part and parcel of our long-term commitments to diversity and inclusivity. Skidmore has been evoking those principles long before they became sort of the buzzwords of contemporary culture. The racial justice initiative was meant to be a companion to and a supporter of our diversity and inclusion efforts, and to particularly focus on action steps that we could take. And remember what that summer of 2020 was like. That was a grim racial reckoning for America. And we wanted to lean into that, to, to have specific projects and initiatives that we could undertake on our campus and in the Saratoga Springs community to look at racial injustice, to look at diversity work and find things that we could do to grow what I described as our community of trust. And I said at my, at my initial appearance on our campus, that's the real goal, a community of trust where people feel at home. They feel like they're invested in the community. They feel like the community cares about them. Over the last three and a half years, we've used the Racial Justice Initiative to look, for example, at the plight of African-Americans, to focus on anti-Asian violence, to look at transgender issues. Back in the spring and fall of 2021, we were looking at the Israel-Palestine conflict. And of course, in this fall and winter, we have revisited that, that uh, 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 grappling conflict in many ways using this initiative. And we've paired it with our commitment to speech and expression that I mentioned before. These pieces must go together. A commitment to racial justice, to diversity, to inclusivity must also go hand in hand with a commitment to speech and expression, to hearing and grappling with and debating some of the key issues in our society. That is exactly how we have approached the current crisis in the Middle East. Our world changed on October 7th with the horrific terrorist attack that Hamas launched upon Israel. And we have all watched with, with horror and sympathy and fright at the carnage in the Middle East as thousands of innocents have died. Our focus at Skidmore from the start has been on our students and our community. The day after that attack, I was reaching out along with our Dean of Students to our Jewish student leaders, also reaching out to our Muslim Student Association, 
We were putting in place gatherings, events, vigils, speakers, educational programming, trying to help our community work its way through one of the most complex, challenging global crises of our lifetimes. And I have said throughout, we are absolutely committed to the safety of our community, the physical safety of our community. And we absolutely reject anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, racism, hate, and violence. But physical safety is not the same as saying you will be safe from ideas and concepts that challenge you. We have had a wide variety of different expressions about the Israel-Palestine conflict on our campus, the whole, the whole gamut of points of view. We've had demonstrations, we've had vigils, we've had rallies. Throughout, we have defended the right of people to express legitimate political views, and we have encouraged the debate and the discussion of those views. And throughout, we have insisted on recognizing the common humanity of our fellow students and of all those involved in this terrible conflict. No, we haven't done it perfectly. And I certainly have been learning on the job about better ways to handle such challenging moments. But I am very proud of how well our community has fared and how well we continue to grapple with this conflict. Just next week, we've got a major event on our campus where we bring both Israeli and Palestinian former combatants to talk about their experiences and how we can build our ways towards a just and a peace peaceful society. This is tough work. That's what a college should be doing, helping to educate and helping to see the multiple perspectives in these complex issues. That really is what a liberal arts education is about. And that is why it is so relevant, so necessary to today's world. People ask me, you know, a liberal arts education, is that still the kind of education the world needs? I say, man, that's, that's what the world needs more than ever in this particular moment. Because what we were really educating people for is civic leadership, democratic action, making this world a better place. Now, I could talk for hours about the ideals of a liberal arts education. I majored in English and philosophy. I taught in great books programs. I love the liberal arts education. I will also talk unabashedly about the return on investment of that education. When people ask me, what kinds of jobs and careers does a Skidmore education prepare you for? I say, what does it not prepare you for? It prepares you for everything you might want to explore in the world. And, and my wife and I have raised three sons. They've all gone through education. I want them to have a job at the end of those four years. I want them to be prepared to enter the workplace and to compete in the increasingly competitive global environment that they will enter into. And that's true of all Skidmore students. This is why I'm so excited about the Skidmore education. As I said, a great liberal arts education, particularly with emphasis on creativity, and an education that includes professional fields like management and business, entrepreneurship, finance, and so forth. This is the sort of commitment that Skidmore makes for its students. This is why our Career and Professional Development Center is so prominent, why we tap into the 38,000 or more Skidmore alumni network, why we have mentors among the faculty and alumni, why students can talk to our Board of Trustees members about the workplace and the possibilities for them, why they can have experiences like our MB107 program or Startup Skidmore or the Fryer Competition or the Entrepreneurial Artist Initiative or so many other opportunities that we make possible at this institution. I like to say there are three things that a college experience should be. The first is a world-class transformative education. If you're looking at schools like Skidmore, you want an education that is as good as the world can offer, a world-class transformative education. The second thing it should be is four unforgettable years four years of thriving and challenge and experience and friendship. Because one of the things I like to say is, don't let your classes get in the way of your education. Now, I'm, I'm a professor. I mean, nothing's more important than classes, but that's not all a great education is about. 
25 years from now, when you leave, when you're, you know, Skidmore is far behind, you'll remember your faculty, you'll remember your classes, but you'll also remember that late night conversation with that dear friend that you were still close to. You'll remember that hike in the North Woods. You'll remember that study abroad experience, those other parts of a great education. So world-class education, four unforgettable years, and finally, preparation. Preparation for life after college. If you're exploring colleges and they don't emphasize how they get you ready for the rough world that you'll be entering, I would look at that place with some suspicion. Our commitment is we prepare you for life after college. So we don't prepare you for this job or that job. We prepare you for any job. We prepare you for the multiple jobs that you will experience during your time. We're preparing you for the jobs that haven't even yet been dreamed of because you will dream of them and you'll be able to make them happen. Everything we do comes back to our students. We are a college that is resolutely focused on the student experience. And you've heard me articulate the heart of that. Opportunities, preparation, educating for leadership, to be engaged citizens, civic duty, dedicated to community, and able to adapt to a world that is changing so rapidly. And to me, it all comes down to this. I want our students to be prepared to lead lives of consequence. Lives of consequence. That's independent of what one does for a living. You can be a lawyer, a teacher, an artist, a banker, a dancer, a sculptor, an accountant. Doesn't matter what you do. It matters how you do it. The impact you have on your world and your ability to go out and change this world for the better. That's the educational experience that we offer at Skidmore. And now I am eager for your questions uh, and to see what else I can, I can offer about this great college that I feel so blessed to be able to lead. Thank you so much, President Connor. Um, and by the way, pulling a late night right there from within his own office right there on campus. Um, we've got some great questions that have been coming in um, through the Q&A. And the first one, um, you know, what type of individual do you think would th best thrive in a community like Skidmore? I, I love that question. Some people have asked me, oh, what's the Skidmore student like? You know, how do they compare to other students you've met? And, and one of the things I have learned, and, and this is where my, my own, uh, you know, being able to be in the classroom has, has really helped me. There is no single version of the Skidmore student. Uh, it, it is remarkable, the, the variety, the mutability, and the acceptance of multiple, multiple kinds of students that we have at Skidmore. Creativity obviously is is central to Skidmore students, but but we have students who are uh, uh, who approach the world very differently, all through logic or fact or science or or you know uh, accounting. Like that's that's an intellectual approach as well. Uh, we have students who who are outgoing and extroverted, students who are uh, who who pull into themselves and and meditate within. What is remarkable about Skidmore, I think, and it goes back to what I said earlier about the kindness of this community, all students are welcome. All students are, are invited to the table. Uh, we bring together athlete and non-athlete, scientists and artists. Uh, we bring together all versions of gender identity, racial identity, national identity. Um, that so, so it's difficult for me to say a single thing. It's rather many things, but but the kindness the creativity, and I'd also say kind of a boldness. Uh, I'm seeing this in my class right now. I ask my students questions about Irish literature. They'll come up with anything. And, and it's really exciting to see they are not fettered by a sense of I ought to say this or that. They're going to say what they think. And that helps us build to greater understanding. Yeah, I mean, it would be so exciting to be on that uh, that that trip, right, to to Ireland. Imagine going to you know to a destination after studying with the president for a semester. Well, I mean, I think what you're talking about, President Connor, has a lot to do with Skidmore's do both mentality, right? We want you to embrace both your artistic side as well as your athletic side, right? Um, it's pretty common to double major, um, but you know, there's a question you know that's asking about you know blending arts with more 
traditional college paths or classes outside the arts. And I mean, could you describe a little bit about how students might, um, you know, take those academic explorations um, and, and do so many different things with it? Absolutely. You know, one of the one of the things I liked about Skidmore when I when I was discerning if I wanted to come here, a school that is that is preeminent in the arts among the great liberal arts colleges. But this is not an art school. This is a great liberal arts college. A third of our students were STEM majors before we built the Center for Integrated Sciences. And now that we have this incredible facility, that number will just grow. Our four largest majors, management and business, English, psychology, biology. That tells you a lot about the Skidmore student. I mean, what's typical for them to major in, everything is available to them. We have students who do our Management and Business 107 program who have no intention of, man of majoring in business. They may be anthropology majors, philosophy majors, Asian American studies majors, but they know these are crucial skills and experiences that they need to get. And this is a vital part of our educational program. We don't require you to be a major in music to participate in music, to be a major in dance, to participate in dance, to be a business major, to participate in these, these high demand business economics and finance courses. We make these experiences available to all of our students. So that's a vital part of what we do. I'm so glad you mentioned the dual nature of a Skidmore education. Lucy Skidmore Scribner, our founder, talked about the mind and the hand. We want to educate the mind, creative, critical, and the hand to make things, to build things, to do things, to, to connect hand-to-hand uh, uh, -hand with people. That has remained a key part of the Skidmore education today. Right, right. And the mind and the hand, right? That's that's experiential learning. That's taking what you are doing in the classroom and the life of the mind and finding, you know, useful and interesting ways to, to bring that to the world. But it's also it's research, right? So there are several questions in the chat about how easy it is to get involved in research and, and whether research outside of the sciences, right? It's it's easy to imagine sort of research within, you know, sciences and the labs, but, you know, but what about the humanities? What about other areas when it comes to research? And the answer is, is yes to, to all of the above. Uh, substantial research opportunities, many in the sciences where, where it's most obvious, faculty member has a lab, needs eight students, brings them together, et cetera. A lot of research happening throughout the academic year. So it's not just the summer experience. A number of students will do multiple research opportunities, particularly as they build a relationship with their guiding faculty member. And we have research opportunities in every discipline, many of them in the humanities, many of them in the social sciences. And although we had bountiful opportunities, it is one of the two biggest fundraising priorities that I have articulated. Scholarship and financial aid and and what we call writ large experiential opportunities for our students. So that is why last year we added another million dollars to the endowment for financial aid and another million dollars for student research opportunities. And, and of course, that's just that's just adding to uh, something that we want to continue to to add and enrich. You know, it, it used to be if you had a you know one internship or one research opportunity before you were a senior. That would help you as you as you got into the job markets, whatever they may be. Now it's two experiences, three experiences. That's part of the the ratcheting up of expectation for graduates. Skidmore is leaning into that. We're trying to meet that demand to support our students in the experiences and again in the preparation for life after college. Right, because we know those experiences are are really high impact, right? On on leading, you know, our graduates to to what they the amazing things that they do when when they leave Saratoga Springs. Um, so, you know, and there was a student who asked specifically about whether things like study abroad are are covered by financial aid. And yes, so Skidmore, um, when a student is admitted, um, offers one to meet one hundred percent of a family's demonstrated need on the application forms, um, and that does travel with you and covers you when you study away, right? So there are opportunities, right, where you don't have to worry about financial aid preventing you from, from having that full rich experience. Yep. So there's some really great questions in the chat about um, how Skidmore supports LGBTQ students, um, neurodivergent students, international students. And, you know, I, I think, you know, there, there, there's a lot of questions about how do I find my community and, and will I find support? So could you talk a little bit about that? You know, we we are engaged in that kind of work hourly, you know, every every day at Skidmore. It, it is one thing to say, 
all are welcome, all can thrive. This is a diverse community and, and every school you talk to will say that. Uh, and uh, but I like the way this question is focused. What what are you doing? What are the what are the opportunities there? Uh, a full third of Skidmore students identify as something other than traditional binary gender. So this is something that that we embrace, that we support, that we explore with our students, understanding that there is no one way to identify, no and no final way. Right? A gender identity, like all identities continues and evolves. We find it and we forge it. Uh, this is something that I take seriously as president. So I meet with our Pride Alliance. I meet with our LGBTQ plus organizations as well as, as, well as our students, partly to say, you know, how's it going? How do you feel at Skidmore? What can we do to, to uh, uh, evidence our commitment to all of our students? It's also something we lean into with, with our staff. Uh, who themselves inhabit multiple identities uh, and, and who themselves support our students in these efforts. And, and it's part of the ethos of the institution. If you're at a place that says creative thought matters, if you're at a place that talks about a community of trust, if you're at a place that is emphasizing uh, uh, diversity and inclusion, not just in its words, but in its deeds, then you'll see the organizations, you'll see the opportunities. What's really amazing is what our students do. You know, I was walking through uh, uh, the, 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 the case walkway today where all the, the posters are up, all the activities, whether it's musical groups, whether it's different kinds of, of dramatic groups, whether it's different kinds of clubs, and you see the full range, or, well, I don't want to limit it. You see a great range that is fuller than you see of, of self-identity. We encourage the exploration of that and, and the support of it, too. Uh, this is part of our health and wellness initiative. Uh, to, to, to have the facilities, the peer facilities, the expert facilities to uh, to support students in those explorations. Yeah, yeah, I, you're so right. And I think the other thing that I really appreciate so much about Skidmore, right? Creative thought matters, right? That's really what we believe. But I think creativity is naturally inclusive in its nature. It invites in different viewpoints and perspectives. And I think that that's one of the reasons why students from so many different walks of life, life and expressions of, of self, right? Really find that they're comfortable um, at, at Skidmore. So on a little bit of a different turn, you started talking about the students and the way they embrace and express themselves. There's a question about how students voice their concerns to college leadership. Do they have access to decision makers and what influence um, do they have on, on our campus? So would you like to talk a little bit about that? I would, I would love to. Uh, let me let me give two answers to that. One is the, the formal structures that we have in place. So our, our central sort of governance committee is called our policy and planning committee. The president chairs it, there are faculty on it, there are staff on it, and there are students on that committee, students who are at every meeting, who are voicing the student perspective, not, not by any means just on student issues, but on the budget, on the strategic plan for that year, on, on different capital projects, all the policies that we pursue. This is true with our main diversity committee, the Committee on Intercultural and Global Understanding. This is true on most of our curricular committees. Students are on there, elected and appointed, so that the student voice is being heard in every one of our governance activities. Just this fall, students presented to our board of trustees. This coming spring, students are going to be engaging with the board of trustees. So there's lots of formal ways that the student voice is elevated and involved in the governance of the institution. So that's very important. That's vital to have that happen. The other is the inform. And I'll, I'll just talk about my own experience, but it's multiplied across the VPs, the deans, the staff, all the, the faculty, of course. I walk this campus every day. I engage with students every day. I'm teaching students in the classroom. I'm meeting with students. Tomorrow, I've got my monthly open office hours. Students have signed up to come in and talk with me, sometimes about concerns, issues that they have, sometimes just to to say, you know, well, what's it like being president? You know, that sounds kind of fun. What, what, what's the deal with that? Uh, I have students who make appointments with me all the time to talk about, and obviously I have students who want to talk about Israel-Palestine, who want to talk about their concerns with that issue. Um, uh, this is how I was invited to meet with the Pride Alliance students. Where they, they know who I am, and, and they know my voice, and I know I know them, and they know that I care about them, and that I want to engage with them and hear their voice and it's it's not at Skidmore. It is not performative. 
This is why I'll go back to the first answer. They're embedded in the governance structure. They've got a voice and they impact things. There have been initiatives, the, the health and wellness issue I talked about, those initiatives changed from what I thought they would be because students helped me understand them better. They shape what those initiatives look like. So that student voice is vital. Uh, and, and the access, uh, I, I think, is is actually pretty fluid and pretty easy. Yeah. I, I mean, not many presidents offer office hours for anyone who, on campus who wants to uh, wants to stop by. So, um, you know, that was a little bit of a, you know, a, a heavier question. Um, but one of the, the participants wants to know when you're not working, what's your favorite thing to do at Skidmore? Uh, well, I love walking the campus with my beloved chocolate lab, Molly, who has a Skidmore collar and is, and is known as the unofficial mascot. Molly loves people. Uh, and during, during that first year of COVID, you, know, you couldn't gather, you couldn't meet with people, but I could walk outside and people didn't really know who I was, but they loved the dog. And they come up and pet Molly and I say, oh, I'm Mark, and you. And it was, it was a way we had some initial connectivity. So, so I certainly love that. I love the outdoors activities, kayaking and hiking. Uh, my wife, Barb, and I, I mean, one of our favorite things to do is to come onto campus for the athletic events, the dance performances, the theater performances, the music, uh, seeing students give presentations. So, so there are a lot of parts of the job that don't feel like a job to me. I mean, they, they really feel like a blessing, and those are those are high among them. I've got a few of my own hobbies. Uh, I've done martial arts for years. I'm able to do that in this community. Um, I love connecting with my my three sons who are all in their 20s and really like coming to Saratoga Springs, and, and they kind of feel like they're a part of this community as well. But those, those are some of the things I like. That's a nice question. I appreciate yeah. that. Well, and so you started talking a little bit about Saratoga Springs, right? And, you know, you moved here, as you said, in the height of the pandemic, you were kind of stuck inside, right, for, for a little while. Um, but you you came from much further south, right? And we've got lots of, of students who aren't able to visit an institution before they decide to apply or make an enrollment decision. So, you know, tell us, um, as someone who's a, a little bit more Southern in your your professional background, but from right the the West Coast, um, you know what the capital region of Albany and Saratoga Springs is like. It has been really interesting for us. You know, I grew up on the West Coast, spent several years in New Jersey, a year in Indiana, twenty four years in Southwest Virginia, and then I find myself in upstate New York. and And I was probably like a lot of non New Yorkers. I knew Manhattan. And that there was something kind of vaguely to the northwest of Manhattan, but I had no idea the the expanse, the breadth, the diversity, the history, the beauty of of New York State. Saratoga Springs, in particular, this is one of the you know New York is is declining slightly in population. Saratoga Springs is growing. Saratoga County is growing. The city of Saratoga Springs incredibly dynamic. Multiple, I'm gonna call them industries here. Everything from casinos and horse racing to the Performing Arts Center to the college to ecotourism. This is an extraordinarily vibrant place. Scores and scores of restaurants, clubs, taverns, pubs, coffee shops, two real bookstores, beautiful bookstores in this community, music, theater, ballet, all of this activity happening. That that is a wealth that our students can tap into. The city loves the college. The college loves the city because we're dependent upon each other. One of the reasons people want to come here is this is a great, thriving, safe community. Now, it is a wealthy white community. A lot of the diversity of Saratoga Springs comes from Skidmore College. That's a great opportunity, not just for Skidmore, but for Saratoga Springs. And it means we've got a responsibility towards our community to help them work with, integrate, accept, support, embrace our students, and for our, our student body and our campus community to, to work with and, and uh, uh, embrace this community as well. So that community relationship is very important to me. And it's something that, again, we emerged from the pandemic in a much better place in that regard. A lot of trust was developed, a lot of cooperation between the city and the college. Yeah, ab absolutely. And a lot of the work in the racial justice initiative, right, are things that we've also been in partnership with the greater community around us. You know, so there are some questions of, oh, go ahead. 
the uh, Saratoga Springs Commission on Police Reform had Skidmore faculty, staff, and students on that task force. Again, helping to shape, helping to shape the world for the better. Right, right. We are very much a part of this this community. So there's some questions about relationships with faculty. How, you know, how collegial and nice are they? Right, like you know, I'm a first gen college student. I had no idea when I arrived at college that it was great to go to office hours, not just when you you needed extra help, and and how much faculty would invest. So talk a little bit about that um, faculty sort of connection, and a little bit about advising, um, and then after that, I think we'll head into careers. But talk about faculty relationships. Great questions. The, the, the Skidmore faculty are remarkable. Uh, absolutely tireless, completely devoted to the students. Uh, world-class researchers and artists and, and creative thinkers. And, and to me, that's a vital part of the college experience. Great teachers always have an active, ongoing, intellectual, creative investment. They're always learning about their field because that informs the teaching they were doing. I was in line in the deli this afternoon to get my sandwich, and I was talking to Professor Breeze in the biology department, and he was teaching endocrinology, which he hadn't taught in five years. Even though that's his whole field, he knows more about it than any of us will ever know. He said, it's amazing how much I had to study to get caught up again after those five years. I said, that's what people often don't get about being a faculty member. You know, I, I think they think we learn stuff, and then we just spend the rest of our lives spitting it out, but that learning is constant. We model learning for our students. Uh, you saw the Skidmore faculty in the pandemic and how they did everything, everything they needed to do to keep providing this great education to our students. You see it in uh, uh, their dedication to their teaching. I'm team teaching my course in Irish literature right now, and I'm, I'm getting to work closely with uh, some of these amazing faculty and all the different things that they do. So the, the faculty are remarkable. The breadth of the curriculum is uh, 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 really exceptional among the great liberal arts colleges. I'm so glad you asked about advising. I have said for years, advising is some of the most important teaching that we do at a great liberal arts college. This is why you want to be at a small residential liberal arts college. Our first year advisors are the faculty teaching the first year seminars that every single first year student takes. So you're in the classroom with that faculty member. That faculty member is also your advisor, getting to know you personally, getting to know what your interests are, helping to point you to things you didn't know you were interested in, listening. That's the key part of advising and also helping you navigate your way through picking your classes, choosing your major thinking about those summer opportunities. When a student wants to do research, the first person they'll ask is their advisor. Whom should I approach? Who should I? And so we get those networks happening on campus as well. So the advising role is vital. You declare your major usually in your sophomore year. Uh, and at that point, you typically switch from your first year advisor to your major advisor. If you have double majors, you have an advisor in both. You can always stick close to your first year advisor, even if you know they're there in English and you're going to major in neuroscience, you're still friends. That's the faculty guide. So you still got that, that connection. 100%. So, you know, there are, there, there are a few um, parents on, uh, on the, the Zoom webinar with us tonight. Um, and a few of them are wondering a little bit about career preparation and, and advising, right? So, you know, the faculty with the, the great advising and then, you know, the wraparound supports with um, excuse me, all the experiences and, and other advisors on campus, but talk about how that translates to life after Skidmore and career preparation. So one of the things that I say to our students is, you want to go to the Career Development Center in your first semester, fall of your first year, you want to go there. They are not there to tell you what your career should be. They're not even exactly there to connect you to a job. That happens as a matter of course. They are there as teachers. One of the things I like to say is everybody at Skidmore is a teacher, whether whether you're a coach or a faculty member or a president uh, or you work in the dining hall, a uh, custodial, you're, you're teaching these students. Uh, this is certainly true in career development. So you go there and they're going to help you discern. They are going to have all the different tools in place, whether that's a Myers-Briggs strength analysis or different kinds of surveys or putting you in connection with different alumni and so forth all the different things to start to, to point you in the direction that, that you're already kind of leading yourself in. Again, it's finding yourself and forging yourself. The connection to our alumni is vital. 
we are bringing back to our campus every week, probably every day, Skidmore alumni who are out there in, in industry, in the world. These could be very successful people in business. These could be entrepreneurs. These could be inventors. These could be writers. These could be artists, uh, sociologists, you name it. They come to campus and and faculty know this. It's you know I'll, I'll take my own experience as a professor. I will teach things and just say, oh okay, yeah, well yeah, I guess you're smart. That's great. Somebody comes from without, and they say the same thing. So whoa, it, it must be true if they're out there in industry and they're saying the same thing. So so getting that symmetry of voice, I think, is so important. And students want to see what are the pathways. How do you how do you leave a college and then make it? in the world and to have alums come back, some of whom graduated three years ago, some graduated 43 years ago. And to have them say, here's here's how I did it and here's how the school helped me and here's how I wanna give back to the school so that future generations can have these same transformative experiences. That's that's the tissue of connection that we offer to a school like Skidmore. It, and it's it's almost as if you were reading um, the minds of of one of our attendees, um, someone named Hannah is asking, how does Skidmore's core values, right, the visions and values shape a student's life during and after college? And, you know, that's something that's really guiding us because there are also questions in the chat about where Skidmore is headed in the future. I mean, do you want to share a little bit about, you know, our our our, our vision, your vision for Skidmore and, and where we're headed next? Yeah, I would love to. And it's and it's a collective vision. Uh, we we embarked, as, as you know, uh, over the last two years on a campus-wide project called Visions and Values. And, and my whole question there was, what, what is essential about Skidmore? What are the things that make us who we are, that if you took them away, we would no longer be Skidmore? What's essential to our identity? And we engaged in, in gatherings and surveys and, and different you know, luncheons and discussions, and we distilled it to a number of things. And, and they're things I've been talking about creativity, curiosity, an emphasis on character and on community, a rich liberal arts education with the breadth that few institutions can match, all, all the things that I've been saying. Right. It, it was very reassuring to me and to our community to see us mirror so well who we think we are and who we're saying we are. There's a symmetry there that, that is very reassuring. We know who we are. We know what we're about. At Skidmore. Again, I think these are some of the qualities that have helped us navigate the, the tensions in the Middle East and how they impact right. our college campus this, this fall and this winter. So we're now building on that as we embark on our new strategic plan. We're finishing the strategic plan that ran from 2015 to 2025. Great plan, lots of great priorities. Now we're getting ready for the next strategic plan that'll take us all the way into the 2030s. And, and we're trying to think about what are those priorities going to be? Uh, without question, we want to preserve those things that I've just articulated, the things that our community has articulated. And that's a vital part of strategic planning. It's not just what's new, what are we going to do that's new? What, I mean, that, that's important. But often just as important is what are we going to conserve? What are we going to preserve about this community? What are we, what are we going to strengthen? So again, the creativity, the curiosity, the character, the kindness, New academic directions. I could certainly see entrepreneurship growing. Uh, that's something that is so Skidmore. Creativity, boldness, innovation, taking chances, risk-taking. You're certainly going to see a continued growth in the STEM fields. We're going to be able to sustain the arts and the humanities because that's such a vital part of who we are. The beauty of our campus is going to be an essential part of that vision. And this idea of a liberal arts education that includes professional preparation and get students ready for what the 21st century is going to throw at them. Five years ago in this sort of talk, if I mentioned artificial intelligence, most people would say, what? Now, if I don't say it, people are gonna think, does he know what So we offered our first course on artificial intelligence at Skidmore in 2001. Our faculty are spending this whole year doing a series of colloquia on AI and teaching in the liberal arts classroom. Uh, we've got students who are creating artificial intelligence. I put a policy about AI on my syllabus so students would know what they could do, what they couldn't do. Right. That kind of in it, who knows what's on the horizon five years from now? This world is changing so fast. And in some ways, preparing people to adapt to the rapidity of change 
is one of the most important things we can accomplish in the Skidmore education. Agreed. Agreed. And th there are so many tremendous questions in the chat. We are we are absolutely not going to be able to get to them all. Um, so um, I'm going to I'm going to tee up one more question, but I'm also going to suggest, you know, for the folks who had a particular question in the chat that we didn't get to tonight, please reach out to the admissions office. Um, we also have a number of other virtual information sessions and other programs. We've got recorded webinars on financial aid. Um, there's a chat with with me and with our director of admissions. And, you know, we really want to invite you to get the information you need, right, to determine whether Skidmore could be a place where you see yourself thriving. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out. But I'm going to close it off um, with something a little bit more lighthearted. I'm going to have both of us answer um, about a favorite Skidmore tradition. And I have to say, as a newer member of the community, I had heard um, that at Skidmore, there used to be Beatle mania, right? Where, you know, students performed songs of the Beatles and it's changed to Skid mania. So the greatest hits from 50 years ago. And I, I just loved being in the audience. It was sold out. You had to buy tickets right away to be able to go. But the talent um, of the students who were on stage, many who weren't majoring in, in music at all, um, the range of um, information that was shared about the importance right, of, of these tunes. And in fact, right, 50 years ago, um, there was an amazing hip hop tribute from a bunch of dance students, which I thought was really you know, important for, for, uh, for us to see. But I love skin media. It was it was fabulous to see it this year. My favorite song was when someone sang the Aerosmith Dream On and they hit all the high notes. Um, so what about you, President Connor? Favorite Skidmore tradition to close us out for the night? Remember that moment of Dream On well. One, one guy on acoustic guitar. It was amazing. Amazing. Uh, you know, one of the things they say at Skidmore is uh, our traditions are often just a couple of years old because we change and create and come up with new things all the time. We're not tradition bound. So I'm going to pick one that's in its second year, and it's coming up next week. It's called Love Fest, and this started last year on or around Valentine's Day, and and it's got a, a creative, goofy, zany side to it. Uh, you know, giving valentines and and flowers and that sort of thing. But but it's also got a deeply philosophical part. It's got a health and wellness component. We go to our uh, um, Wyckoff Center, which is a place in the student center. Where, where we go to have the tough conversations, where we bring speakers on tough issues, where we gather uh, to talk about what we're grappling with. This is where we gathered with students in, in October after, after the Hamas terrorist attack. Um, this is where we gather for the important things. We gather in Wyckoff throughout the day on Valentine's Day for Love Fest for meditation moments, for sharing poetry, for... Uh, uh, um, uh, we have chair massages that are offered. We have therapy pets. We have also we we have musical events, and and it's rooted in different philosophers of love: bell hooks, Saint Paul, Moses. One after another, we're talking about how we think about love in our community. So it's got a lighthearted, you know, Valentine's Day kind of thing to it, but it's also got the very core of the human experience. What is it the world most needs? What is it we are all seeking? It's that sense of loving and being loved. And, and inserting that into the Skidmore experience over these last couple of years, it's it's one of the things I'm most proud of. And that's a, that's a tradition that I hope lasts for, for many years at our college. And I, and I can't wait to participate for the first time. So... Yes. Well, thank you all so much for spending some time with us um, tonight. And, and thank you, President Connor, for, for sharing your insights into what makes Skidmore such a tremendous uh, community. And we wish you all well. And thank you again for joining us this evening. Thanks. Thank you so much. Everyone be well. Stay safe. Thank you. Thanks.